Hi guys, this is Joel, and um, in this video, we're going to be going over the different prosthetic options as well as prosthetic kits available for Megagen. I've had many requests for a sort of a instructional video for the overview of the IndyRidge prosthetic kit, but I decided to make it more complete, and I'm going to be showing you the uh, mini prosthetic kit, which is here. And let me just sh quickly show you what's on the inside. You push this button right here on the mini prosthetic pros kit and you open this up like this and in the mini prosthetic kit there is a torque wrench there is a torque conversion handle which looks like this right there now you can see grooves along the side there and it's a little swivel head here as well it has a little floss hole right there for it as well but if you notice right there on the inside it's square now that's going to be a major point of contention which I'll go over in just a second but this square portion right there is very very important then you have your two hex drivers, which are 1.2 millimeter uh, drivers. Again, 1.2 millimeter or 0 0.048. Okay, so 1.2 millimeter or 0 0.048. Uh, other systems on the market that are that use the 0 0.048 hex driver are 3i, um, Branamark, I believe Ankylos is also 048, and others. Uh, but there's really only three. Again, three drivers on the market that, that covers 95% of all screws. And that is an 048 driver. The next one above that is a 0.050 driver, or that's also 1.25 millimeter. And then also there's that star grip. So we'll go over that on a different video, but I just wanted to make sure you understand that there's three types of torque screwdrivers on the market that covers 95% of companies. That's an 048 driver, an 050 driver, and a star grip. That, uh, those star grip typically only Strawman and Nobel use that. All right? So now let's go over the Any Ridge Prosthetic Kit. You can see clearly here it says Any Ridge Prosthetic Kit. So I'm going to open this up. And you can simply take the lid off, and the, the, the base fits nicely into the lid, like so, if you so choose. Now, let's go over the contents of the Any Ridge Prosthetic Kit. I, now, this is not typical right here. What I did, you know, just for the heck of it, so you'll, you'll know what this, these are, these are latch drivers. Sometimes I go into an office and people want to use a particular latch driver or in surgery, for instance, they might have a right angle driver that they want uh, to use with the latch. Obviously, this is a latch engage, engaging mechanism. Again, we're going to be over, going over that in a different video. But I have in my prosthetic kit both a short and long .048 uh, engaging latch drivers. Now, in your Any Ridge prosthetic kit, uh, there are, and by the way, it, it's uh, signified with two red grommets, and the reason they're red grommets is because this is what you're going to mainly use. There is a short 04A driver, which looks like this, and again, everything that's, that's a, a hand driver has a blue top to it, and it has these little lines all the way around the neural portion. Uh, of the, um, the vertical lines in here as far as the handle goes. That's, and obviously S means short. L, and you can clearly see this is long. This is for anterior type cases. Again, here's your blue portion there. And you're the same handle. Now this says, let me, let me show you like that. That says removal driver. Now there's an 18 millimeter long removal driver and a 25 millimeter long removal driver. Okay, let me just pull this out. You can see with the removal driver and how it's different from the normal driver. This has the exact same sort of handle that we talked about earlier, but this has actual, let me, let me get something to point it out here. This has actual threads right there. All right, that's gonna be very important in a little bit. And then obviously this point, pointed tip right here is an 048 driver as well. So it has the driver portion, the threaded portion in the shank of the screwdriver and then the handle portion here. The distance 18 millimeter long. This one is 25 millimeters long. Again, this is for if you're going to be removing an abutment from an any ridge implant, which I'll show you uh, how to do that in just a second. But the reason you need this is because of the very unique and very strong 5 degree Morse taper. That 5 degree Morse taper definitely grabs the abutments, the abutment uh, hex with the walls of the 5 degree Morse taper 
and this, these threads here will actually help remove that abutment from the implant, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. The next thing that we have into, into the um, Anyridge prosthetic kit, it says impression driver, okay? And it says S and L, but they're definitely different and shaped differently. The impression driver is for placing the uh, transfer impression coping into the mouth. And you can see here it has a little portion here that it's, enga it's an engaging mechanism there. And it has sort of a three-lobed position there. I'll go over that. Well, you know what? Let me do it right now. Let me show you how the transfer impression coping works. Here is the transfer impression coping like that. You can clearly see it has a flat side to it right there, but it also has these sort of hour, uh, uh, TP or hourglass shaped uh, indentations into it so it'll fit nicely into the impression. But then it has these vertical grooves that you can see all around there, okay, and so forth. What the impression driver does is, and now, but it also has one very unique thing also on this transfer impression coping. It has an 048 little hex hole right there too. That's your sort of insurance policy if you want to use that. But let me show you how this impression driver works. The impression driver literally fits in that three lobed portion there and it basically slides in. You can twist it and you can see that it fell right into place. Now look, I'm going to move this shank forward like that. Now, I'm able to carry this impression coping to the back of the mouth. Let's say you're in number, you're in number two or number three area, and you don't want to have to be going like this. Let me get the short driver. Here's your short driver. The, all, the other thing you could do is grab your short driver like this, put it into the hex hole like that, and carry it to the back of the mouth like that. All right? Let's say you want a little bit more security. When you're carrying it to the back of the mouth, and you don't want this to fall off. Not that it would fall off, because everything fr friction fits nicely. Let me just show you something. I push down like that, and obviously the, the driver friction fits into the impression coping hex hole, and see, and it doesn't fall off, all right? I just want to emphasize that. But if you want a little bit more security, that impression coping driver fits, again, right over that. Fits just like so. And now you can carry the whole thing to the mouth, to, to the back of the mouth like that. Now here's why this is important, because what this does, this portion here, it screws, it friction fits up against the guide pin that's inside the impression coping in the uh, transfer impression coping. So it literally friction fitted around that, that, um, the head of the guide pin, and now you're basically screwing this into the implant. But obviously you want to make sure that your hex is lined up to the implant. So let's do that real quick. By the way, when you get your parts and pieces from us, you're always going to get an analog and an impression coping. A good thing to do before you go to the mouth is do what I'm doing right now. Practice it outside of the mouth before you go to the mouth. So go ahead and open up your analog, open up your impression coping. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two parts together like so. So literally you can see the impression coping going into the analog and I'm twisting at the same time and I want that hex as it just did. The hex is going to fall down into that analog. Then at the very top here, the very top portion there is literally friction fitted up against the head of that guide pin and now it's screwing that impression post down into the implant which is the analog. So the, see there, now it's obviously it's just going to spin. It's not going to continue and lock in place. It's just friction fitted up there. So now you can clearly see that your impression coping is nice and tight in there. All right. Again, the analog is mimicking the implant that would be in the mouth. But you could practice this outside of the mouth before you go to, the, um, uh, to place your impression coping in the mouth. All right. So if you want to do that again, to remove, after you take the impression, to remove your impression coping, you can put that back on and literally try to loosen this up, all right? It may be a little bit more difficult just because that little friction fit needs to grab around there. Let's see if it's loose now. Yeah, see? Or you can get your fingers. See, that? that's the, the little uh, head of the guide pin that it's, uh, the impression coping is in. 
So that now that came out like that. Now let me do something and take this apart so you'll see what I'm talking about. Here's your transfer impression coping, and there's your guide pin. All right. That's your, your transfer impression coping separated into the two parts. Here's your guide pin. Here's the body of the impression coping. So you can clearly see here that the transfer impression coping has a hex to it. Okay. Now, when I get your guide pin, this goes into, whoops, I just dropped it, and that's, not, that's what you don't want to do in the mouth. And that's why that little hex hole is important. So that, that's a great little point here. Look how this hex hole will fit right into this right there. And again, you want to push down tight and it won't fall off. But then you can use your driver like so and put this in there like that because there's threads in your transfer impression coping that keep the guide pin from falling out. Now your, your guide pin your, sar your guide pin and your transfer impression coping are one, okay? So now, we'll, now again, you can take that to the mouth as well, just like it is, and place it like so. All right, so that's what the short impression D driver does. Let me get to the long one, so you can see how that one works. The long impression driver simply fits right over the head of the transfer impression coping like so. And again, it's, it's friction fitted into place. And notice I'm pushing down, again, pushing down on the head of the guide pin. And again, it fits on there. It's not going to super friction fit on there, but you can clearly see it's only slightly friction fitted. It, it held for a little bit. And again, you, you can, it won't fall off for the most part. But how that works is, is it only grabs the head of the guide pin right there. All right? So now what you can do is do that like that, put that in there like so. See now your impression post, uh, you slide that down and you simply drive that into place like so. Now, notice, notice again what I did. This will continue to twist because it's only friction fit engaging. So after you've tightened it down, then just simply remove it. And now you can clearly see how the impression coping and the analog are one. But again, the analog is mimicking the implant that's in the mouth. Then again, if you want to come with your short hand driver and then remove everything. And again, when you, before, when you, put your, when you uh, engage your hand driver into the, whatever it is, make sure and push down first. Okay, because then it nice and friction fits on there. Pull that off like so. That way you can pull gently just a little bit and see now it won't, it, again, it works like that and it doesn't come off. So that's how these two items work together with your transfer impression coping. Let me put that back like so. All right, now there's one more item in there, and this is that torque conversion handle that I was showing you. Now, why is that important? Because that portion right there is square, all right? This does come with the Indy Ridge prosthetic kit, but now I'm gonna go to the mini prosthetic kit to emphasize something, because these little, what I'll call them insert drivers or torque tips, what a lot of companies call them, do not come in your Indy Reg prosthetic kit because you don't need them. But I'm going to show you, this is how the mini, the mini prosthetic kit comes and it's a square headed insert driver. The reason this is square, because most companies use a square drive as a universal engagement mechanism. So let me show you that right there. You can clearly see that little head is right there and it's square. So this torque conversion handle will slide, this insert driver will slide right into the torque conversion handle. Now we have a hand swivel driver, two piece. Again, these parts and pieces come separate like that and like that. But this is only in the mini prosthetic kit, okay? But the mini prosthetic kit functions just as well as the other prosthetic kit and this, your torque wrench fits on there like so. So let me finish the any ridge uh, prosthetic kit. So that goes back in here like so. All right. But back to the any rich prosthetic kit. This is in here to to function with other uh, implant companies. For instance, Zimmer uses as uh, actually the, the the three right off the top of my head: Zimmer, 
BioHorizons, and Astra all have a square-headed engagement torque mechanism or insert driver just like these. All right. The reason I say that and the reason we put this into our torque, uh, torque wrench set is because obviously these are, are Megagen specific, but if you have this little insert driver with this torque wrench, this, this torque wrench can now be a more universal torque wrench. Why? Again, just like we mentioned, that's how it engages like that. And most drivers look like this coming from other companies. So this square head will fit right into here. And all we do is we put that right in there like that. And now it is a full blown torque wrench. Okay. So let me remove that. Let me show you another little trick here. That comes out like so. Now, here are your hand drivers. Again, here's the short hand driver from Megagen. Notice, however, it has these vertical grooves on here. Why does it have those? Because with the Megagen hand wrench, you don't want to have to use this portion right here, this torque conversion handle, like so. Because the hand driver fits directly into here, like so. So now it's only really your torque wrench mechanism and your hand driver. First you use your hand driver, for instance, to place the final screw like that on your abutment. And then you can put your torque wrench right on top of there like, like so. Now you can use it as a torquing mechanism as you can hear the little click, click, click. Okay. Now the other thing you need to look at the torque wrench is this little arrow right there. That arrow always should be in the righty tighty position when you're tightening. So the arrow is actually facing me right now and then your torque wrench arm or your spring bar is right here. That's 15, that's 25, that's 35, and that's 45. So this torque wrench is very universal with other systems because it has your graduated amounts on here, 15, 25, 35, and 45. But if you, want, if you simply want to loosen something up, you, gra you, gra you grab, actually you grab this handle, you pull it, and then you twist it, and you release it. Now that arrow is facing in the counterclockwise direction. So it's counterclockwise, or, or lefty-loosey, versus clockwise, which is righty-tighty. Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. All right, so go like this. And now it's in the righty tighty, and you can you can use your torque wrench appropriately. If you want to loosen something up, simply back it out. Okay. Now again, here's your hand driver. That's a short hand driver, just for the heck of it. You can see your long hand driver like that, and your long hand driver, same thing. It fits right into the torque wrench like. Whoops! I dropped it, so I'm not going to pick it up. Here is your next driver, which is your abutment removal tool. Here's your uh, hex point right there, and here's your solid shank. This also, because of the head, fits directly into that, like so. You can hear the click, click, click. Now, what's different about this right there? You see the little threads on that? Again, there's threads on the shank. Now, why is that important? Let me emphasize real quick something. Here's your any ridge implant. That is a, the base, or excuse me, the interface of an any ridge implant. All right. Here is an, uh, a, a big abutment, and I've got, I got purposely got a big abutment so you can see that in there. And the big abutment is going to go into the implant like so. All right. And there, obviously, it's about a four or five millimeter cuff margin, so you're never going to use. Well, I shouldn't say you never, but you're typically not going to use a cuff that large. But you can see this is a big seven millimeter abutment. Now, let me put the final screw into there, just so you'll see what I'm talking about. We're almost done with this video. Your final screw goes in there, and I'm going to get your long uh, abutment removal tool. Even though it has a thread on there, you can still use it just like a screwdriver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the screw into the threads of the abutment first, and that's what I didn't mention. There's threads on the abutment, so let me show you how that works. There's threads on the abutment first. Notice I can't push that screw through the 
um, through the hole there. I have to literally screw that in like so. And now you'll see the threads of the abutment come. See, there you go. Now the threads are through. So now my, my driver is just spinning. Why? Because it's already engaging the thread. So notice that, by the way, I, I, again, I push down. I push down on the driver. And now, now notice I'm going to keep your, your uh, abutment still, but no, now look what I'm doing. See, I'm pulling on the threads. In order to remove the, the threads, excuse me, the, the final screw from the threads of the abutment, I have to pull up gently and then start removing it slowly. And that's a trick that I'm going to show you how to do in just a second. Okay, that, that's a very important trick. So hopefully you can see that. So notice the screw is coming in and out, in and out. It's not engaging the threads. Okay, now when I pull up on the screw, and again, you first push down hard on your screw to make sure your hex driver is engaged fully in the thread, in the hex of the final screw. You pull up on this like so, and then you simply back it out. Keep going until it's fully disengaged, and there's your final screw. Okay, so let's do that one more time. And I'm going to show you the full trick here, how to remove, remove the abutment from the implant. All right, now we're fully engaged into the abutment again. Here is your implant. Again, there's the interface of the implant. The abutment is going to go in like so, and, and basically you can see where the, the hex fit right in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten that screw down into the implant. All right, it's tight now. All I'm going to do is just give this a nice little smidge like that because I don't want to torque it down into place. All right, now what I'm going to do, sometimes, let's say you're doing a, a, a framework try-in or a, some sort of appointment where you're, where you're actually delivering and you actually go and you put the abutment in. But now let's say, I don't know, you had an open contact and you needed to take the, uh, remove the crown and abutment and send it back to the lab. Well, you've already kind of hand tightened that down, right? So let me show you a trick. What's going to happen here? I'm going to remove that screw. Again, I'm going to first back it out of the threads of the implant. Because remember, the screw threaded into the implant as well. Now, watch what I do. Notice what I do here. Look, I have that play right there. I'm lifting up on the thread, on the final screw itself. I'm lifting up. And then now I'm disengaging the final screw from the threads in the abutment. And there it is. All right. Now, let me remove this screw. It's nice and tight, as you could see. Here's how the abutment removal tool works. And this is nice and friction. I'm literally pulling up on the abutment and it, and, and it's, it cold welded into place with just a little bit of hand torque to it. Now, here's how the abutment removal tool works. The, the abutment removal tool, these threads here, are going to engage the threads on the inside of the abutment. And then when, it, 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 when the bottom, when the apex of the screwdriver bottoms out on the implant, what's going to happen? It's going to lift up on the abutment and it's simply going to remove it. So here's how it works. Just keep going. Righty tighty. Righty tighty. Righty tighty. All right, now I can feel it. It's bottomed out. Now, what's, now watch what happens. I literally keep turning righty tighty. Guess what? Now that abutment driver comes out like that. Again. It doesn't come off of here because there's threads. You see? That's how the abutment removal tool works. So that's what I was talking about earlier. When you have the mini prosthetic kit, it does not come with an abutment removal tool. So if you get the mini prosthetic kit, you also need an abutment removal tool from Megagen. All right? And one more thing, your uh, abutment removal tool can also be used as a torque driver. Let's say you need a little bit more access. Okay, you simply put that on there like that. You put this onto the screw, and now you can see the shank is a little bit longer. And let me show you an extreme example. Look how long that shank is. Again, 25 millimeters. That hand driver will fit right in top of there. Now this can go into your final screw if you need more access for whatever reason. And again, you want to make sure that your, your um, slow graduated um, pull on this spring bar 
is only on the spring bar. When you go to use it, you want to pull on the spring bar only. You don't want to pull from the, from the body here. You only want to pull from here. Now, the reason I have to hold my, my thumb there is because if I don't, there's no way that this is going to give me re, uh, resistance. So, as you're putting pressure on your spring bar, what, what is happening is as the screw tightens up, tightens up, the resistance on your screw is actually read here. So if I'm, if I'm tightening up to 15, that means 15 uh, Newton centimeters are on the screw, uh, torque of the screw. That goes to 25, that goes to 35. So in between 25 and 35 is for the any ridge. 45 is for your uh, big fat rescue implant, okay? So 25, 35 is for, in between 25 and 35 is for the any ridge, and, and any one, by the way, uh, implant system, and 45 is for your rescue, all right? So hopefully that helps. I do want to point out one thing. If you do want to remove uh, and take apart the, um, the torque wrench and oil it every now and then, you can do so like this. You unscrew it like this, you pull it apart, and you simply wipe it down with some oil. And that's all you do to maintain this torque wrench. Now how to use it again is, and by the way, if you can see Let's see if you can see it like that right there. You see that little lip right there? That is the engaging mechanism of your torque wrench on the inner portion here of your hand driver. So it basically engages like so, all right? Just so you kind of see how it works, all right? But again, now how you, how you put it back together is you put this, let me, let me show it like this, put this in there like so, put this back in there like so, tighten this down all the way up against the body of the torque wrench, like that. And now it's ready to go. All right, so this has been a demonstration of the Any Ridge Prosthetic Kit, the Mini Prosthetic Kit, and the um, impression coping for your uh, any ridge implant system. I'm going to finish by doing one thing because people always ask me what is the any ridge implant compatible? They always want to give me the size but remember one of the very unique things about the any ridge implant is that it uh, it only has one universal platform which makes your life a lot easier. That's why you really need uh, only need one impression coping uh, the transfer impression coping that comes in either a four or five millimeter flare, but again, it only it has the same hex on it. So let me show you a little trick here. This is a big fat implant, as you can see. Let me point something out. Look at this small four millimeter flared healing abutment. Look at this big fat implant here. That's a seven millimeter implant. That's a small four millimeter healing abutment. Notice this. Okay, it screws right into the top of the implant, like so. So now you can clearly see that the four millimeter healing abutment is compatible with the big fat implant as well because of the same universal platform. Now let me do an, an extreme example. Let me show you the big fat eight millimeter flared healing abutment. This is an eight by three. Look at this. This fits in there like so. Okay, again, eight flare, big fat implant. This is a type of healing abutment you would normally use with this type of implant. But again, I just showed you those two extremes to show you the universal connection ability with the any ridge implant. And if you wanna do even a better analogy, here's your small analog with a big fat healing abutment, fits in there perfectly. Here is your medium sized analog, which medium size basically means from 4.0 through 5.5, that fits in there just like so. But it has just a little bit wider platform width than the small one does, but the hex is the same. Now, here's your wide analog and here's how that fits in there 
like so. So again, I'm simply demonstrating the universal platform connection ability of the AnyRidge implant relative not only to the healing abutments, but the impression copings themselves. All right, I think that does it. So mini prosthetic kit, your AnyRidge prosthetic kit, and obviously in all the packages that you purchase from Megagen, your AnyRidge prosthetic kit comes already in the package. Your mini prosthetic kit is for more, more restorative doctors. If you have any questions, you can always email me at joel.gonzalez at megagenus.com and uh, for any questions and so forth. Thank you very much and we'll talk to you soon.